Hello, how are you doing? Uh, welcome. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, my name's Steve, Steve Beckles of Boucher, the speaker with the Orange Tie Guys. I'm back with the tie on. Um, those who don't know anything about me, I'm a motivational speaker. Uh, I go to schools, colleges, uh, companies and um, universities around Europe, UK and in the States. Um, what do I do? I talk about belief systems. Um, this is my second uh, session this year and, and what I've kind of thought to myself, do you know, I'm going to keep it upbeat and, and positive. Not that I haven't been, but I think it's so easy to kind of get consumed with our situation that we all know so well. And I just think sometimes it's all about focusing on what we can control, which links very nicely to really what I'm going to be talking about. Now, um, I've been delivering these for, well, since March. We're nearly coming around to a year since I've done these. And for me, it's been, I've really enjoyed the experience. It's taken me on a journey. I never thought I'd be doing all of these. And it's really just about, um, yeah, I suppose just helping you to help yourself and others as well. But if you look by my strap line at the beginning, I had, um, what window are you looking through to determine your locus of control? And what I want to share with you, and I will be doing this now, I'm studying to be a therapist. So I'm really excited about it, a, a cognitive therapist, a uh, behavioral therapist, and I'm really excited. I started last year, actually, and um, I'm finding it absolutely amazing. I'm learning so much, so much that I've known anyway, but just really looking at how I can extend what I actually know. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about our behavior. Now, I'm studying to be a cognitive, cognitive behavior therapist, and what that's all about is often looking at the cognitive part, um, looking at the way we think, and the behavioral part, the way we do, the, the, the behavior we do with our behavior. And for that, for me, I just that's just really hand in glove with what I really enjoy doing. So with the strap line, I want you to think about it, and obviously I can't bring my window over, but we have the window there. And the idea is that you have internal locus of control and external locus of control. When you um, open the window, okay, and you look out, outside there is the external locus of control. So what does that mean? That means everything out there you can't control, okay? Everything in here is the internal locum of control. This was first kind of devised by a guy called Julian Rotter in 1954, and he was a personality psychologist. And I'm doing this on my course at the moment. Amazing guy. So he, he talks about how there's things that are external and there are things that are internal. Now you've probably heard me say many a times where I give the analogy of a, a boat on a lake and the wind is blowing. Uh, the wind that's blowing is the external. Yeah, the setting of the sail is the internal, that's what you can control. So what I want to do is talk a little bit about um, internal and external locus of control and how you can, if you are an internal local control, in other words, you're letting things uh, not affect you, that's great. But if you're an external local control, in other words, all of those things that are going on outside you are affecting the way you're behaving, Hopefully I'm going to have some tips to help you. Um, whilst on my course, I'm learning so much about a lot of the psychologists out there. So I, I was very aware of what behaviorists are, but behaviorists are people that only believe that externally can um, affect the way you behave. So external elements will affect the way you behave. People like B.F. Skinner. John Watson, Ivan Pavlov, I, Ivan Pavlov, you've probably heard about the uh, salivating dog when it heard, hears the bell, yeah, all external. Uh, they're called behaviorists. Now, I, I am actually, I don't think I'm a behaviorist. I think I'm more like Freud, who believes a lot of it is internal um, and a lot of it is what you can control. So let's look carefully at what internal and external is. Now, external locus of control, what do you think about that? It's your success being based on what happens outside of you, all right? That's someone who is an external locus of control. So in other words, they will put all responsibility on things that happen outside of their lives, outside of what goes on. So if they get the promotion, they're grateful for it. Why? Because it was an external thing. 
And for them, it's very important that the external affects the way they behave. Now, this is really important because the internal, they believe their success is down to them, is down solely to what they do. Now, I'm hoping now you're perhaps thinking of some people, maybe yourself, who's perhaps external. So in other words, you let all of the things going on outside you affect you. Now, don't get me wrong. Obviously, what's going on now, and I don't want to go too much into it because we all know about the lockdown. But to a point, yes, that is affecting us. Jobs, uh, relationships, that obviously is affecting us. However, internal locus of control is being able to say, do you know what? It is the way it is. Nothing I could do about it. But this is what I can control. All right. So they're the two differences. External locus of control, letting things outside you control who you are and how you behave. Internal locus of control is being able to control all the things that are within you. And then what you do, you have the effect on other people, but you believe in yourself and what you can achieve. Now, this is really important because what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you five tips, five techniques, five ways to become more internal than external. Now, if you're internal anyway, thumbs up, brilliant. You might still might find this useful. But if you are external, and I think there are large amounts of us in our mind that have that external. So in other words, other things outside there are making a disastrous effect on our lives. I was talking to my friend this morning and he was only saying to me, oh, the things that are going on with Trump, it's a nightmare, isn't it? How could he do this? And he went on and on and on. I had to pause him. I said to him, I understand what you're saying to me. And uh, yeah, obviously it's terrible what's going on. But really, and this guy in particular was, has a lot of challenges going on. I said, that's really nothing you can do about and really has nothing really for you to focus on. You need to focus on yourself, your internal locus of control. And it's a little bit surprised when I said that. But the point I'm making is I think a lot of us are getting lost with things, all of these things that we can't control. Now, I said before I started, I didn't want to talk about the lockdown because we know about it. However, that is an external fixed. OK, it's now us dealing with what is that's our internal local control. OK, so that's just an example. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you five tips, five tips that if you are an external locus of control type of person, generally, don't get me wrong, I think internal um, locus of people have that element, which is external as well. But generally, if you're saying 70, 80 percent of you is always concerned about things going on, these five tips, hopefully, I believe, will help you to at least realign where you presently are at. OK, so first of all, most important is to realize that you have a choice. All right. So this is developing your internal locus of control. You must understand that you have a choice, even if you feel. No, Steve, I haven't. I, I just you know, I, I, you do. You do have a choice. Now, here's a choice. I can decide to pick up this pen and put it down. Now You might be thinking, Steve, that's petty. It's not petty. The point is, I have control of what I do. Raise my hand. I can control what I do. And what's so important is once you kind of really get that, and I know it sounds really simplistic, you get it. You then start to think to yourself, hold on a minute. I, I don't have to follow the pattern which I've been doing for ages and ages and ages, which is getting me down. I can change my pattern because I have the power of choice. All right. Now, this is really important. I want you to kind of grasp this is that I think as a guy called uh, Eckhart Tolle living in the now. Now is the only time you can control. You can't control the past because that's gone. You can't control the future because that hasn't occurred. So the past and the future are just illusions. They don't actually exist. Now is all that you can control. This is the first step. And I think in becoming an internal locus of control person, because then you start to realize that, you know what, th there's nothing. That's why I don't watch the TV half as much. In fact, I don't watch it at all. You're probably aware of what I do. Why? Because a lot of the time, I 90% of the time, I can't control it. Now, obviously, I'm very interested to find out what the chance is going to do because I'm self-employed. So obviously, I'll be Googling and maybe go on Sky News just to find out what, uh, what, what, what you've got for the self-employed people. But generally, all the stuff that we hear, it's only my opinion, 
especially on TV and the media, you, you, you can't control it. And it's all extra. Now, it can be informative, but to what point is it? Is it informative for it to change your life for the better? It could often change your life for the negative, yeah? But can it change your life for the better? If not, you need to push it aside. Internal locus of control. So that's the first point. Next one, this is so important, is to make a list of all the things that are maybe challenging you, all the things that are in your life at the moment that are causing problems, etc. Please make a list. I really want you to do this. I really do. OK, make a list as many as you can. All right. Once you've made the list, what I want you to do is tick the things that you can do something about. All right. And then put a cross next to the things you can't do something about. Let me give an example, tick of things you can be. For example, if you're in your front room and it just looks a state, it needs tidying up and it needs to be done. You can do something about that. So there's a tick. If you are uh, in a relationship and an individual is constantly saying the same things over and over again and it's getting on nerves. Now, I could say you could do something about that. Obviously, you, you know you could end that. However, at the moment, you can't. So what happens? He's saying that same thing and it's getting on your nerves. Uh, at the moment, that's what he's like or she's like. Does, does that make sense? Yes, I do agree that you could do something about it because you could end that relationship. But it's just this point tick and cross and I love this quote by a lady called Mel Robbins she says if you've got a problem that can be cured by an action you haven't got a problem I like that if you've got a problem that can be cured by an action you haven't got a problem so there's no excuse go through that lip tick yeah and most of the time the, the things you're going to cross are going to be things to do with job maybe uh, you know sometimes you can't determine whether you're going to be on furlough for another month another two you can't control that all right but you can control the things and you know the things you can control put a tick around them here's your now target what you need to do is start with the easiest thing to deal with i know that sounds really soft but it makes sense listen to what i mean start with that one you ticked off with maybe tidying the front room do that all right what does that do it sends a message to your brain that you've tried something and you've achieved it and you have a good feeling. I think you get a feeling of endorphins. And so now you're ready for something else, maybe slightly harder. It's like going down the gym. You'll never try to, you know, bench press the heaviest weight there. Why? Because you're going to do yourself an injury. What do you do? You start off with a lightweight and you build the momentum until you're ready for the heavy weight. Does that make sense? So with your list, just tick off the things you know are easy to do or easier to do as you build up the momentum then you can maybe start with the harder things and that might be you know having a conversation with that person that, that is getting on your nerves and, and it's causing you distress and it's causing other people to stress but you maybe want to build up to that okay very important so the first thing guys is to realize you've got a choice you do the next thing guys to make that list tick the ones you know you can control put a cross next to the ones you can't in fact just put a line for it you can't do anything about it that's to do with all this stuff outside. Yeah, like lockdown, you can't do anything about it. It is what it is. If it's gonna be March, it's gonna be, you, we don't know. We don't, it, do you know, we can't control it, all right? So that's going to be decided by the people. Work on what you can decide. Uh, the third thing is really important is listening out to that voice. Now, even if you're living on your own, there is a voice and the voice is you. And that voice is going on in your head all the time. Yeah, and it's not necessarily negative. How many times you got up first in the morning and you wonder what to have for breakfast? That's the voice. Yeah, and the voice says, "What should I have for breakfast?" No, no, I had that yesterday. Do you want to have something? That's the voice. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's a negative voice, but it is a voice. I want you now to address the negative voice. Now you might have heard this technique before. I put this on specially, but I've got a rubber band. Okay, and um, I used to do this. Now I don't do it so much because I'm kind of getting into the habit of coming out of that negative talk. But you put the rubber band on for a day, do it for a day, put it on. Okay, here we go. As soon as you have a negative thought, a negative feeling about someone, even start doing maybe a negative action, I want you to just pull it. Okay, now to some of you, it's going to be like self abuse because <laughs> you've been doing it all the time. But some of you, I think, will be doing it. Pretty infrequently. I don't think you're probably doing it that much. However, just do it. Because it's that little wake 
that little kind of message to say, whoa, 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 stop it. You're being negative again. It's a very physical thing. And it's quite fun, really, because then these people start asking, what's all these other bands about? And you say, don't worry about it. It's for a reason. But it's important to try to measure what's going on in your head, because if you let that run loose, and I know from experience, it can just be devastating to your success, your life in general, because what happens is you just don't have any measurement and your brain just goes crazy. You have 50,000 thoughts a day on average. And I read somewhere 80% of the same ones we had the day before. So you need to break out of that. And this is really good. Okay. Next thing, point number four, when things go wrong, invariably they do, I want you to think, how can I turn this into a good situation? Now, you might think, Steve, that's all that positive. It's not. I'm being realistic. This is a true story. This happened to me this week. I was doing a, a call to a school and they're on Google Meets. I've never used Google Meets before, but it's just a link that they sent to me. OK, um, I spoke to the person um, uh, a day before. So we set up. We were fine. Got going to do the Google Meets. We were talking, the kids were joining, and as they began to join, I just found myself, my voice became delayed, until it got to a point, I think there was about 40 students that were all in this Google Meets thing. Bang, all of a sudden my connection went. I came out, went back in, linked back in. Um, I tried to log back in, but the minute I logged back in, it booted me back out again. Now. I had to adopt an internal locum of control. Listen, this was down to me, all right? It was going on outside because it wasn't connected, but I had to deal with it. Eventually, I didn't manage to connect up. I sent a message saying, was, and she said, um, oh, don't worry, um, we'll try one more time. And I thought, you know what, Steve, you need to take the initiative. What I said is I messaged her back and I said, listen, I can do a recording of my talk OK, free of charge because it's my fault. Now, I didn't know if it was my fault, but that wasn't the issue because at the end of the day, she had 40 kids ready to go and it wasn't ready to go. OK, it didn't turn out to be free of charge. I said, oh, free of charge. Charge as usual. Um, not a problem. It's OK, Steve. And um, just send us the recording. That was it. Done. Because I decided that it was down to me. It was an internal locum of control. I had to control it. Do you know what I could have said? I could have said, well, I've never used Google Meets before. I think it might be something wrong with your uh, your, your connection. I, that, I, easy. Easy. Now, I, do you know what? I don't even know if it was. But it didn't matter because I had to take control of the situation. I did. Did the recording. They were happy and everyone's happy. And hopefully I'll have the opportunity to go there next year face to face instead of doing the Google Meets. But what did I learn? I learned that things will go wrong. I've now learned a little bit more about Google Meets. I did some <laughs> did some Googling on Google Meets straight afterwards just to find out, you know, what possibly could have gone wrong because I need to take control of this. I could not let this happen again. All right. Uh, and the fifth thing is really important and it's kind of ties in with the fourth thing. It's to take responsibility. That is total control. I think it was Jim Ryan says, when you take responsibility, you move from childhood to adulthood. Take responsibility. Do you know what? Take responsibility when it's not even your fault. Now that is internal locomotive control. Why? Because you're not depending on that person to apologise to you. You're not depending on that person to say, oh, uh, let me do it this way, blah, blah, blah. What you're doing, you're taking control. And I know many people might say, no, no, I'm not doing that for him. He needs to get it. I personally believe you need to take control and move on and don't ask them again. Because when you take internal locum of control, everything then is down to you. Leaving it to external control, waiting for that person to apologise for what they did. You know what? They might not ever apologise. So what happens? You then become bitter for I don't know how long. It's just not worth it. OK, so that is it. Boom. Guys, let me give you those five tips again. Most important of all, realise that you're in control. You can take the choice. You can pick a pen up. You can throw it away. You can go, hey, you can throw the pen away. You can do what you want. You're in control. You have the choice. Second thing, very important, make that list. Put the ticks and the crosses. Put the crosses next to things you know you can't control. Don't say things like, oh, well, you know, maybe I can uh, contact, uh, you know, so and ring them up about, you know, the, the lockdown and maybe they could take it to tier one. Keep quiet. Yeah, it's not going to happen. All right. 
You can't control that, leave it alone. Deal with things that you can control. Don't get lost in things you can't control. Now it's your choice to listen to the news and the rest of it, but like I said, I've moved that aside because it's just, just gonna get inside my head and all the things I can't control is going to pull me down. Next thing, guys, is watch for the rubber voices. Rubber voices? We Watch for the voices and then start using the rubber band. Try it. Try it for a day. See how you get on. It makes an amazing difference to how you start to think about what you say. Next thing's very important, guys, is as soon as you um, hear yourself kind of talking negatively about a situation that's gone wrong, ask yourself, if it has gone wrong, um, what have you learned? What have you learned from it? That Google um, Meets thing, that is never going to happen to me again because I've learned from it. And as it turned out, it was really good because I admitted it was my fault and the lady said, don't worry about it, send the recording over and we'll sort out payment. So that was great. However, it's about taking that responsibility. And finally, that is the last one, tip number five, just take full responsibility. Even if it's not your fault, I think sometimes take responsibility when it's not your fault. The person that knows it's their fault actually starts to feel bad about themselves because they know, they know it's down to them. Double boom. Guys, thank you so much. I hope you have enjoyed it. And the whole idea, guys, has been trying to get you to think differently. Um, on purpose, I've not dealt and spoke about this whole situation because we can't do anything about it there we go see that's internal locus of control all right because that's my decision just to move it aside and park it what i'm doing every week guys is just bringing you stuff that i've been studying as a therapist i'm looking forward to being a therapist got a bit of time to go but i'm enjoying my journey and it's all about learning a big shout on saturday or sunday i should say between 10 and 2 me and Nat natalie ward uh, are going to be on the radio between 10 and 2 on the ossr show talking about all the topics playing some great music and most of all really engaging with you guys so please ring in and uh, yeah just cast your ideas and views on what's going on in your life guys i hope you have enjoyed it and i think one of the most important things like i always say it's not about just getting through this situation which we all know what this is all about it's about gaining from it so it's about pushing yourself as much as you can try to use that external locus of control move it away close that window and just focus on what you can control guys have an amazing weekend and thank you so much for listening i really appreciate it take care and see you later have a great weekend